Russian soldiers appeal to Putin over military failures. Commanders are leading us to our slaughter. A group of Russian soldiers who volunteered to fight in Ukraine have complained about their commanders in a video appeal to President Vladimir Putin. According to Newsweek, since the start of Moscow's invasion of Ukraine, there have been numerous reports of low Russian troop morale in which video messages to the president have criticized a lack of training, equipment, and the actions of their superiors. The latest appeal shared on X by Ukrainian internal affairs advisor Anton Gerashchenko shows a group of seven soldiers he said were from the 5th Company of the 3rd Battalion of Russia's 7th Guards Motor Rifle Regiment. Newsweek says that an unnamed serviceman in the middle of the front row addressed the camera and described how he and his comrades had resorted to a direct plea to the Russian president because they had found themselves in a difficult situation. He said, they had voluntarily signed a contract with Russia's defense ministry on May the 11th and were told they would be on the second and third lines of the front. But he said that after initial training, we realized we had been deceived and that after the first assault, we realized something was going wrong with wounded soldiers being left to die on the front line for several days. While his group evacuated the casualties, promises by the company commander that he and his comrades would eventually get provisions, food, water and rest in camps away from the front line were not kept. We go out on various assaults on various tasks assigned to us by people we have never seen, he said. They are leading us to our slaughter. He added, noting that only 25 troops were left out of the company's original 110 men. Every day our guys return injured, he said. The best case scenario is if they come back injured. Pointing to his comrades, he said that every person here now is happy to be out of this hell, away from the scum that gives us such orders. I fear for my life, he said, as he described how, when carrying out tasks, our own artillery and mortars hit us. Why is this attitude towards us? We voluntarily signed these contracts to eradicate this fascism, but in the end, fascism is among us and is trying to eradicate us by any means necessary, he added, referring to one of the Kremlin's justifications for the invasion, which was to denazify Ukraine. The female bodyguard who protected former U.S. President Donald Trump from a possible second bullet during the assassination was born in Russia's Ryazan region. According to information, the woman, who is a master of sports in hand-to-hand -hand combat and karate, is from the city of Skopin and is a student of Olga Navikova, a trainer and master of sports from Ryazan. In 2000, the girl moved to the United States with her family, where she worked as a coach and studied at the university. He later graduated from a private bodyguard school, which is believed to have somehow led him to become Donald Trump's personal bodyguard. At the same time, the audio expertise showed that Donald Trump was shot from three types of weapons. But despite this, the Federal Bureau of Investigation insists on the version that the shooter acted alone. Experts from the National Media Forensic Center at the University of Colorado in Denver, who examined the records of the assassination attempt, concluded that the first three shots were fired from one gun, and the next five shots were fired from a suspected second gun. At the same time, the last, acoustic pulse, could have been made from a third type of weapon. Also, audio analyzes confirmed that the shooter was about 110 to 120 meters away from Trump. According to the version put forward by Russian shooting instructor Sergei Dubov, it is forbidden to bring weapons to any event in the United States, so someone may have let the shooter in who wanted to assassinate Donald Trump. At the same time, the instructor said that no special training is required to fire a rifle. He noted that the shooter could not pass the weapon through the police cordon. It should be recalled that the assassination attempt against Donald Trump took place on July 13 during his meeting with voters in Pennsylvania. One person died and others were injured during the incident. The politician himself received a slight injury to his ear. The shooter was identified as 20-year-old local resident Thomas Matthew Crooks. He was neutralized by snipers of the U.S. Security Service. One of the shooter's classmates remembered him as normal and a kind boy who never had a bad word to say about anyone. Another acquaintance of the attacker noted that Crooks was always lonely and wore a camouflage suit or hunting clothes to school.